Now the challenge we face is creating unique slugs, as in unique for the entire database. Each slug is non-existent in the database as it stands. Now, in order for us to be able to check this, we have to use Django query sets and lookups. That's a way to do it because the ultimate goal is to change our views from using IDs, but rather using slugs, much like the reason slugs exist in the first place to make it more user friendly. And so to get here, the first step I wanna do is jump into admin.py for the articles and just take a look at the slugs themselves. So adding it into the admin and of course, making sure the server is running, we should be able to jump in and take a look at all of these slugs, right? So we have a bunch of them and they're identical. And so this would create a havoc for us in many ways, which we'll see in a moment. Now I will say there is this reference guide that is inside of this folder called reference. So feel free to take a look at that in the future. Of course, the Django documentation is great for that as well. But what I wanna do here is I wanna actually jump into the shell and just do some querying of the database as in asking stuff in the database. So inside of here, we're gonna run python manage.py shell. And we wanna get the article model. So from articles.models, we're gonna import article. Okay, so the idea here is how do we actually get a single article? Now you might remember from when we did our detail view, we did objects.get ID being some ID that exists. In that case, it actually grabs that object. And so, like I said, we wanna to move towards doing slug equals to, well, in this case, we can go ahead and say, hello world. And what we're gonna get is an error. Now, in my case, it has an error. So if you did a slug that doesn't exist, let's say something like this, you might see this error. Or if you did a slug that does exist and only has one item, then it, it wouldn't bring this back. We'll see what that looks like in a little bit. But the idea is we don't want this to happen. We don't want this get call to ever happen when it comes to looking up by slugs. It certainly will not happen with IDs. So with IDs, the only thing that could happen really is that the article does not exist, which means there's a 404 error versus the article returned too many. Okay, so how do we actually filter the database to see if these items even exist. So one of the ways we can do that is by declaring a query set. So if you remember, we did article.objects.all on our homepage and we could actually see all of the saved articles on that homepage. And that still should be true actually. So if we come in here, there's all of our article objects. And it's literally all of them. So like I mentioned before, that could be a million. But in this case, it's just a few. Now to actually check how many, we can actually just go ahead and say qs.count, use the parentheses, and it'll show you literally how many are inside of this list. Now this is actually the more efficient way to do it than len qs inside of Django. They do yield the same results, but this one is more efficient as it terms for the database. And so now what we wanna do is, I wanna actually change all of the slugs or how they're generated. Now, how do we actually determine whether or not a slug exists in the database? Now to do that, we're gonna go ahead and do article.objects.filter. And so filter is very similar to get, but it's literally filtering down a list of items. So we can actually do slug equals to hello dash world. And this will filter down all of the slugs with that actual, or all the article objects with the slug of hello world. And we can see the count is a lot less, right? So there's not actually that many. And you know, we could filter it down even further by doing dot filter yet again, and this time saying title being hello world, just like that, and hit enter. And now we can do qs.count again, and now it's only showing two. So this is actually kind of a curious number as to why would it be showing two. And the reason I'm saying that is because if we go into the admin, we actually see hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world as a title many times, right? So it's possible yours doesn't have this, but in my case it does. And the question is like, well, how do I actually filter this so it does show all that? Maybe it's the order of filtering, right? So maybe it's should be article.objects.filter and now saying title equals to hello world and then hit enter. And of course, that time it only does two as well. And so this actually brings in a little bit more of a complex query. 
So inside of the actual filter itself, sure, we could set it equal to some value, but what I can also do if I press up, I can use two underscores and do something like I exact. Hit enter, now it gives me a ton. Now what I exact is meaning is it's exactly this string except it's case insensitive. So when I mean case insensitive, if I get rid of that I, which is the flag for insensitive, I can just see exact and now there's literally only two articles with literally this string as the title, which we could of course parse through and see. Like these first two look like they're it. Otherwise we have several others. Here's one that has an exclamation mark. And so if I came in here and said exact, there's that. Cool. Now there's also another one that we can use, which is contains. So we can say I contains instead of I exact. And contains is merely, does it contain this string? And if you put an I in front of it, it's either gonna say, does it contain this string exactly or lowercase, right? So in the case of capitalized, it's gonna be a different number, potentially, right? It really depends on exactly what's in this title and how many are in there. And of course, we could actually check this by doing dot count on both of them and see what the actual value is. Looks like it's not making a big difference in this case. So this is actually querying the database. Now, if you think about it, this is actually a better way to do searches as well. So in our views, if you scroll up to our search view, all we were really doing was querying the database based off of some ID. And of course it was only getting one single item, which is certainly not ideal. We wanna get a whole list of items. So as it stands right now, we have a way to do that. This is one of those basic query lookups. And so we can actually use this inside of our slugify function. And that's actually what we wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. And just before we even implement it, I just wanna mention that in here now, we can actually say slug equals to this slugify method here and set it like that, right? And we could do that same thing down here. And what you should notice is a pattern, right? So this and this are almost identical. And so we also might wanna just say, you know, define sl slugify title and let's call it actually slugify instance title and we'll pass in the instance and then we'll go ahead and say save equals to false. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass this in and tab this back. And then I'll just go ahead and say if save it, if save, then instance.save. And now I have a little bit more of a robust function for slugifying this title. So now down here, I can just go ahead and say slugify instance title of the instance. Now I can always return back that instance as well if I was so interested. Right, so you could say something like this. It's not completely necessary, but it's nice to see. Now I'm gonna get rid of that. And then down in the save method, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know, save equals to true. And the reason I do save equals to true has to do with the fact that we need to save it on a post save, something we've talked about in detail. And so now we've got save equals to true, and it might be a good idea to come in here and say save equals to false. Now again, the way we save this stuff is not really that important, but now we're actually working towards a better way of doing slugify. But of course we still need to make some sort of feature, some sort of improvement now that we understand a little bit about query sets and how we're gonna end up parsing this. So before we go any further, the only thing I'm gonna do here is say QS equals to the class itself. So that's gonna be article. So article.objects.com filter and this query set we want to filter based off of the slug okay and i'm going to go ahead and come in here and say slug equals to slug then i'm also going to go ahead and do dot exclude and this is going to be id equals to instance dot id so the nice thing about this exclude method is then if i were to filter this down i just want to make sure that even if i'm saving this all over again it's just gonna exclude the current instance because whatever we sit, set here doesn't have to be included in this main filter. 
So what we've got here now is we can say if qs.exists, so that is if this slug exists everywhere but the current instance, then we can just go ahead and create a new one. And so I'll do that with slug, or let's go ahead, we could say new slug, or really just slug equals to the string of the original slug, which of course is this one right here. And then we can do something like qs.count, let's say plus two, or something along those lines, plus one, either way. Um, so now it actually create a new slug for us in some sense. It's not necessarily perfect, but at the very least, it has a better look overall. And so now that I've got that, let's go ahead and save it. And let's get back into the Python shell. Exit out of it if you haven't done that already. So we're going to go ahead and do from articles.models. We're going to go ahead and import the article itself. And then I'll just do for obj in article.objects.all. And then I'll say obj.slug equals to none. And then simply obj.save. We hit enter and enter. Notice that I've got all of these print statements of post saves, prev save. Now, hopefully that's not that surprising because of this and this, right? And so all of those items were just being updated. So really the pre-save one that is the only thing that did anything because of this created block. So we save that and let's go ahead and make sure the server's still running. Sure enough, it is. And now when I look in here, all of my hello world is coming through. It's actually building on top of what we had before, right? So that's great. And I like seeing that. Next, of course, if I add an article here and say something like hello world again and some gibberish, we're going to go hit save and continue. This is a problem, right? So it's saying hello, hello dash world dash two. And what's happening here is it is incrementing from the original hello world, but it's incrementing in the incorrect way. In other words, we are setting a new slug here, but then we actually don't check this new slug here. So that's something we'll do in the next one with a recursive function.